So now let's uh, solve some questions on law of rotation. And before we take up numericals, let's look at some concepts which you should be aware of before we solve the numericals. In fact, there's only one concept which you should be aware of, and that is that for a freely floating body. Please note the use of the word freely floating body. So if there's a body which is there inside a liquid and it is freely floating, that means there's no external force applied on it by any other object except for that particular liquid or that fluid. When it is freely floating, in that case, W is equal to F. That means the weight of the object which is acting in the downward direction is equal to the up thrust acting. In fact, a more precise definition or a precise formula is down thrust is equal to up thrust. And in this chapter, and while we solve these difficulties, we'll basically look at W is equal to FP, but there's a difference between saying W is equal to FP and saying down thrust is equal to up thrust. So if we have, let us say, an object which is there inside a liquid, let's say this is the level of the liquid, there is an object which is freely floating over here inside this part of it is inside water, part of it is outside water, and it's freely floating over. Weight, you know, weight will act in the downward direction, up thrust will act in the upward direction, and these two forces, when they become equal to each other, the body is freely floating. When we say down thrust, down thrust would include all the forces which are acting in downward direction. For example, the weight of the object is acting in the downward direction. Maybe we are also applying an external force from above. So this would also be a part of a force which is acting in the downward direction. And this and these two forces together would become down thrust. Similarly, up thrust could be the force of the liquid which is acting in the upward direction. Maybe there is some other agency which is also act, applying a force on this object in the upward direction. That would get added to up thrust. So, law of flotation essentially says that for a freely floating body, all the forces acting on the object in the downward direction are equal and opposite to all the forces which are acting in the upward direction. But for sake of simplicity, we will use the equation W is equal to Fp in this case. A. Now, W, you know, is VI, rather, let me, VB, VB rho BG, and up thrust is VI rho FG, these two are equal. So, G will get cancelled, and I'll get VB rho B is equal to VI rho F. And this equation is the most important, or the main equation which we will keep on using uh, throughout this topic. There are various uh, uh, or there are variations of this formula which we will also use. For example, if we have an object which is shown and let me show you the same diagram object which is in the form of a cylinder, let us say and it is freely floating. And let us say the total height of the cylinder is H1 and the immersed height is H2. The cross-section area is same throughout. Let's say we have a cylinder which has got a uniform cross-section area. Now, in that case, the total volume of the body will be the total height H1 into the cross-section say area rho into rho B. Whereas the immersed volume will be the height H2, which is immersed, into cross-section area. Remember, the area remains same into rho F. So, AA will get cancelled out and we will get H1 rho B is equal to h2 rho f. So this is another variation of the same equation which we use if the cross section area of the object is throughout the same. So we have to keep that in mind. I can use this only if the cross section area is same throughout. Now if the fluid is liquid, is water, say for example, then h1 rho v is equal to h2. Density of the water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. So if I am dealing with centimeter gram per centimeter cube, this will become 1 and therefore density of the body will become equal to H2 upon H1 where H2 is the immersed length divided by the total length. So density of the body is immersed length upon total length 
Now, before you use this formula, you should be very, very clear that this equation, this equation, you can use only if there are, there are conditions which are to be met. Only if one condition is that fluid is water. Because as you saw over here, we took rho f as 1. 2. The second condition is that cross sectional area is same throughout. That's another condition because we cut AA in this case because the area was same. And third, of course, the third main condition is that third main condition is the body is freely floating. Freely floating. So you can use this formula when all these three conditions are satisfied. If the fluid is not water, if only these two conditions are met, then you can use the formula h1 rho b is equal to h2 rho b. And if these two conditions, condition number one, condition number two are not set to the and if the body is only freely floating, if that is only known, then we will use this equation. So this is how we will choose the equation which we have to use while we solve these numericals. So let's pick up a couple of numericals from this chapter and solve them. I'm taking up the first question. It says that a rubber ball floats on water with its one third volume outside water. What is the density of the rubber? So we have this situation that one third volume is outside water. So if this is the ball, then the water level will be something like this, something like this. This is one third of the total volume and this will obviously the part which is inside will be two third and this is one third. Therefore, we can write down that Vi is two third of Vv. Please note that we were, we were given that one third volume is outside. If one third volume is outside, obviously two thirds is inside and that is the immersed volume. Therefore, we get Vi is equal to 2, 3, 2 upon 3 Vv, which is the total volume of the ball. The question says a rubber ball floats. So, it is a case of flotation on water with one third volume outside water. What is the density of rubber? So, I can now use Vb rho B is equal to Vi rho F. The fluid is water. So, density of fluid is 1. Now, I can write down rho B is equal to Vi by Vb into rho f. What is Vi upon Vb? From this, I can write down Vi by Vb is equal to 2 by 3. So, Vi by Vb is 2 upon 3 and density of water is 1 gram per centimeter cube. I have taken 1 gram per centimeter cube. You could take 1000 kg per meter cube as well. So, density of the fluid will, body will be 2 upon 3 grams per centimeter cube, which will be equal to 0 0.667 grams per centimeter or if you multiply it by 1000 you would get 667 kg per meter let's take another question question number four i am taking a piece of wax floats in brine what fraction of its volume will be immersed so we have got piece of wax floating in brine. This is the body, this is the fluid and it is floating. Density of wax is given to us as 0.95 gram per centimeter cube and density of brine is given to us as 1.1 gram per centimeter. We have to find out what fraction of its volume is immersed. Now we know that Vb rho B is equal to Vi rho F when we have a floating body. Therefore, Vi by Vb is equal to rho B by rho F. And we want to find out this Vi by Vb because we have been asked to find out what fraction of its volume is immersed. So Vi by Vb will give me that fraction which is immersed, which is equal to rho B upon rho F. Rho B is given to us as 0.95 and density of the fluid is 1.1. So, if I solve this 0.95 divided by 1.1 will give me 0 0.86. 0 
0.86. So this is the fraction which is there. But now in the question, it, the density of the wax is actually given as 0.9. So I want to make the correction over here so I can remove this 0.9 and I should take here 0.9. So this will change to 0.9 divided by 1.1. 0.9 divided by 1.1, which is equal to 0 0.818. 0 0.818. So that is the fraction. 0.81 part of the total volume is immersed. Let's take one more question. I'm taking question number seven now. A wooden block floats in water with two third of its volume submerged. Wooden block floats. So condition is flotation with two third of its volume submerged. So VI is equal to two by three of the total volume. Because two third part is submerged, which is immersed. Calculate the density of the wood. So I will use the same method again. I know that density of the body upon density of the fluid is equal to Vi by Vb. In this case, density of fluid is 1 because it's water. So rho B is equal to Vi by Vf, Vb rather. Density of fluid is 1. So for rho F, I have taken 1. Now Vi by Vb is equal to 2 upon 3. And that will be equal to 0.667 gram per centimeter cube. The second part of the question says when the same block is placed in oil, three quarter of its volume is immersed in oil, calculate the density of the oil. Now when we have oil, the immersed volume is equal to three quarters, three by four of the total volume of the body in case of oil. So rho B by rho F is equal to V I by V. Now we have been asked to find out the density of the oil, so we want to find out rho F. Rho B is already known to us. We can use because the density of the body will remain the same because it's the same object. So whatever density of the object I have found over here, I will use it over here. Therefore, I will get density of the body is 2 by 3. Density of the fluid is to be found out, and V I upon V B is 3 by 4. Therefore, Rho F will be equal to 2 by 3 into 4 by 3. That will be 8 by 9. And that will be equal to 0.88 gram per centimeter cube. And if you multiply it by 1000, you will get 8 at some because you will have to take this ratio. 8 it will be, it will be 0 0.889 and then 4. This will become 889 kg per meter cube if you do it in kg. Multiply this by 1000. So, these are some of the questions I have done on law of flotation. I hope they will help you understand completely law of flotation. Thank you.